Well, Mukera Mifta is an assistant professor at the Institute of Eastern and African Studies at Social Sciences University of Ankara. He joins us now live. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Tell us first what is happening today, in your opinion. We thought, at least from the outside, progress was being made toward a transition, but with 13 people now believed killed in one protest, is military rule tightening its hand? Obviously, in the last two or three weeks, the uh, military has gone essentially from more of uh, uh, a soft sort of political and diplomatic approach to its engagement with the opposition to the one which we, which we are now currently seeing as the one uh, characterized by its blatant and forceful uh, uh, approach to engaging with the protesters. Well, there are many uh, conditions underlying these, you know, uh, fiasco, th these problems in general. Do you expect, however, that these protests will, will actually grow in spite of the dangers uh, we're seeing posed by the military and the police uh, cracking down very violently on these, these protesters in Khartoum? Well, probably this may continue in a way different, perhaps, from the way it used to be in the last, I don't know, uh, in, 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 in April, it was something different. But, but now, the, you know, the overall trajectory, the overall circumstances surrounding the protests seems to have uh, really uh, got itself within you know, a, a problem, pro, pro, uh, political deadlock. And I think one particular problem is that the uh, organizers of this protest and the, the uh, political parties who were organizing this protest we really underestimated the power of the military in the country. And uh, again, they have never had a, a strong uh, unified political consensus behind members of the coalition, the, 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 the nationalists, the, the Islamists, and, and, and other political parties were not working hard to make sure that they have a one unified voice against the state. And, the, and another problem would be that the, the way how the protesters were organized and led have had, uh, you know, full of ramshackles and problems and challenges. So, in, in, some, in some cases, the military was basically using those protesters as a, as a, as a pretext to crack down on, 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 on the, the, the protesters. So, you, you see multidimensional problems at many levels. Do, do you think, though, that what the military is doing it could actually backfire? Because you mentioned that we... The opposition, as we know, and these protesters are not fully united. They don't have a common leader, for example, and many of them uh, don't see eye to eye on issues of what role Sharia law should play, what role the military should play at all in the government. So what uh, do you expect the, the talks to happen? I mean, the military says that they're looking forward to the talks today or tomorrow, and now the protesters are saying there will be no dialogue. Uh, between the military and the protesters? Well, about, well, there are probably some suggestions that we can make. Well, for one thing, for instance, the African Union, the, the international, the uh, regional organization of IGAD can play an important role in, 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 in negotiating between members of the, the political actors in Sudan. Uh, and again, uh, probably one of the best solutions uh, would be that they uh, clean their staff, their problems inside before basically going out and move, you know, make any uh, states against the, 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 the military regime, which has, you know, in the last, I don't know, three or four decades has been evolving to become strong, powerful in, in, in a number of ways. It's not only an institution of uh, security, it's an institution of a political ideology, political party. It has its own extended mechanism of uh, a state operation and a governance, and therefore, I think they, they need to realize that the, 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 the problem that they are facing is more than what they have been thinking. And I don't know, well, the, 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 another issue which I haven't mentioned earlier, that some of the political parties and individuals involved in this protests were no visa. They don't necessarily have a practical political experience that would in some ways challenge the power and, and, and influence of the military. Probably if they can manage to organize themselves in the first place, between or and, and among members of the coalition. And second, they need to design a strategy, an effective strategy that would help them uh, organize and lead the protests in, 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 in Khartoum. And if, if that happens, 
things may turn out to be good, may turn out to pave the way for democracy to have its footing. Okay. Mukera Mifta, thank you so much for joining us live there from Ankara. We appreciate it.